I'm guessing you, hello, Secretary of State, and uh, so I'm guessing you watch Channel 4 News. Um, what do you think of its output in terms of a news so, broadcaster? So, you know, I, re I get on really well with Cathy Newman, and, um, and actually, I, Cathy's asked me a number of times just recently while I go, I'm sorry, Cathy, she's asked me a number of times recently, can I go on? The problem is, it's usually very short notice, and, and I be, I'll just correct that. She's asked me for the past two weeks to go on, and, and I have been on Channel 4 News a number of times. It's edgy. I think it would, you know, I'm not going to justify a news programme whose, whose news anchor went out shouting obscenities about the Conservative Party. So, you know, they don't do themselves any favour sometimes, the news programme. I think that's probably about as much okay. as I could so, say uh, So the 4th of April tweet said, you know, you've co I've come to the conclusion that government ownership is holding Channel 4 back from competing against streaming services like Netflix and Amazon. Could you see a... Maybe you've answered this already, but I'd love to ask you it specifically. Could you see a situation where, where a privatised Channel 4 doesn't have a news output? No, no, okay. because that's, that's part of its public um, service remit, which will be to you know, entertain, educate, inform. Um, but also part of that public service remit is to be impartial. Yep. And so I don't see a day when Channel 4 doesn't have news but it does have to be impartial because that's part of a public service broadcast remit. Yeah, so in many ways that's slayed the payback time dragon, hasn't it? So one of the reasons maybe that Channel 4 responded the way that they did and inspired and encouraged the 38 Degrees campaign, and can that be the last time we mention that organisation, please, in this, in this committee? Um, because they didn't see the logic in what was being proposed. So I guess the three things that I'm asking myself, and a lot of constituents, a lot of organisations write to me about this before I'm asked to vote on the media bill, is would the sale be in the interest of one audiences to the media industry that we all love so much, and three, the creative workforce? Could you speak on just those briefly, those three things, audiences, media industry, and the creative workforce? Why is this sale in the interests of those three pillars? Audiences, media industry. Okay, so on audiences, yeah. I think um, they're going to get a better deal because um, I think uh, Alex is absolutely right. The board are right at Channel 4. They need to, they need to raise funding streams and investment. Um, they, they need also to be able to have the ability to make and sell their own content, which they don't under their existing license <laughs> with the government at the moment. So being able to make and sell their own content and to be able to to borrow and raise investment to be able to do that will be a better deal for audiences because I think it will be more distinctive British content, edgier content, more of what they do best. They're risk takers. They'll hopefully, with investment, feel more comfortable in being able to do that. In terms of, um, in terms of media um, and creative industries, I can probably answer those two together because part of the sale proceeds will be... Um, I mean, I've kind of answered the, 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 the content bit in the media section, but in terms of creativity, the, the sale funding, you, as you are very aware in this committee, we have, um, I think, Pinewood are opening 17 film studios next year. We made more films here in the last quarter of last year than they did in Hollywood. We have um, Sky and other film studios opening. We have a skills deficit in the creative industry. And, and what the sale of Channel 4 will do is raise that creative dividend. That funding will be ploughed back into, into the creative industry sector, back into the independent production sector, because we no, need skilled people. And if you will just um, allow me, part of that feeds very much into my own personal agenda in the department, which is that there are many people in parts of the country, and I don't mean... In the you know in London and the southeast, I mean, in parts of the country where people don't even think they could possibly ever work on a film crew or work in a film studio, that those jobs are for other people who come from different backgrounds to those that they do. I'm talking about a creative dividend that will help to train skills in people from those backgrounds so that they too can partake in the creative industries because frankly they don't. The creative industries are very short of people from um, backgrounds that we would describe as working class, left behind, deprived backgrounds. And I really see a, a, I have a view that that creative dividend can really be put to good use 
to help both levelling up people from those backgrounds and getting more skills into the creative industries. And as I said a moment ago in the previous answer, Margaret Thatcher did it by establishing Channel 4. We want to do it by the job is being done, is by once again stimulating that industry with more qualified and more skilled people, but from a variety of backgrounds, not just from kind of the normal cohorts where yeah. those... Okay, thank you. Cohorts. It's good to discuss this. I think the, the intellectual argument that has been put into this consultation and into this decision, and Twitter does never convey an intellectual argument. So I think it is that that the, the legislative process will hopefully tease out, because without that what we're teasing out today, people can jump to conclusions and say that this is payback time, this is the culture wars, um, people can boil it down into, into glib sentences and that isn't helpful I would suggest to, to this argument at all. Just finally on this, um, you said you know, this is going to happen, Channel 4 is going to be privatised. Well, I mean obviously subject to the will of Parliament, which I mean yes the government has a majority but you know, Parliament can still vote and will still vote on the media bill. Before, when is the government going to publish what obligations, if any, will be required of any purchaser? So you've talked today about 10 years as a public service broadcaster. The HQ is in Leeds, which was part of their contribution to the levelling up agenda. Will that information, as in what will be required of any purchaser, be available to us as members before we're asked to vote on the second reading of any media bill? Because otherwise, I feel like I'm being asked to sign a bit of a blank check. So a lot of the detail um, is a bit... So I'll just go back to the first point that you mentioned about um, uh, Twitter. And, um, yeah, you know, we, we see a lot on Twitter relating to a lot of what we do in our department. And I would just say that, um, you know, Twitter isn't life, real life, and real life isn't Twitter. And, and unfortunately, I'm not responsible for the things that the arguments that people will put forward on Twitter, all I can try and do is via the passage of the media bill and via the detail that we're working through right now, which is on issues like Leeds and um, you know how many uh, of the employees will be based outside of London. I think, in, um, I think in the next episode, Channel 4 may have even argued themselves for moving completely out of London and selling um, the London building. We, we're, we're at that at that stage of working through that detail as to where Channel 4, all of the detail about the sale, how many people will work outside. And, I, and actually, I, I really look forward to having some, and I'm going to hold sessions with MPs. I have, you may be aware, that I spent my entire Easter recess talking to MPs about nothing but this issue. And we will, um, because it was announced just before the Easter recess, but we will be holding... Um, Ministers, Minister uh, Lopez will be holding meetings with MPs where we can actually, of all parties, where we can just talk through what these issues are. But can I just also add, you know, um, in, the media, in the media bill, I'm, uh, it, Sailor Channel 4 is in there, and I know that's big, but also in the media bill is prominence, things, yeah. and there are, so, and that's something Channel 4 wanted, and that's something that the public sector broadcasters wanted. Prominence, I know they have already, but in this rapidly changing broadcasting landscape, prominence was a big deal to broadcasting. Can I just press you on, on those specific point about the obligations that will be required of any purchaser? The 10-year PSB, I know, and you, know, you said you're working through that detail, but can you see why MPs might want to know the detail of those obligations yeah, of sale before they're asked to vote? on a media bill. Absolutely. I understand engagement with ministers and MPs, but I mean, you know, I have both been a minister engaging and I have been engaged by MPs and ministers. Um, will we have that detail before we're asked to vote? Yeah, um, we will, obviously. Okay. We wouldn't expect Parliament to vote on a deal without knowing. Fine.